Hey YouTube, I got an exciting video for you today. Uh, today is the start of my documenting my journey growing microgreens. Now, I have not done this before. This is an experimentation. Um, this is part of the series I've wanted to do on sustainability as far as growing your own food at home. I've done a fair amount of research into this process, uh, about five years in total, and so I'm wanting to put boots on the ground today. So I want to document the progress, uh, how I've started, what I've set up with. Um, I'm very, very excited because I received my seeds in from Canada, they're organic. And uh, so today I'm gonna start the germination process. It's gonna take quite a few weeks uh, for this to be completed. Um, but I wanted to learn and you guys can all learn with me. Um, I have a little bit of a different setup. I'm growing them aeroponically. For me, um, I've always loved farming. I've always loved growing stuff um, and to be able to grow it inside basically where you're not dealing with pests, uh, droughts, blah, blah, blah. It's very controlled, uh, should, should work quite well. So um, my setup's a little different. I haven't found anything really on YouTube about aeroponics as much. Most people do a lot of grow mediums from cocoa base to just regular soil. Uh, some people do hydroponics where they're growing the plant system um, in water and they have to balance that rather they have fish that they're using the fish waste to do it as a sustainable project. I didn't want to complicate the process. Aeroponics is one of the fastest ways to do it and I haven't really found a lot about that so I thought I'd put a video out about my progress so if you guys wanted to uh, do this in the future maybe you could see how I do it and learn from my own mistakes so there's a lot of things out there that you can do from sterilizing the seeds to balancing the pH bringing it down etc um, I'm gonna try all of it so we'll see what works we'll see what doesn't starting today with germination and go from there. So my idea of sustainability is as efficiently as possible because why should you not be making your day more efficient? I built my tower completely automated so the idea was all I have to do is germinate the seeds. I can put them on uh, the grow medium and then just leave them and then come back in a couple weeks and just harvest. That, that's that been my idea. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, so when I upscale this, I'm not spending all of my time watering like a lot of people do. Now with that in mind, here's my setup. I bought one of those Sam's Club four, actually five level uh, racks. And I bought these trays. These trays are about $98 a piece. Um, I'll go over my setup later, but they're basically all plumbed in with spray nozzles in them. They drain down into a central tank. Now, the spray nozzles are below these mats. Um, so what I'll be doing is I'll be putting the seeds on these mats, the roots will be growing through them, and then they'll be misted from the bottom. A lot of humidity gets kicked up when they turn on, and I'll be covering this to black them out uh, as they're growing. Now my thought with this is I'm going to start developing the bottom rack, and then as I go and become more efficient, find out what works, what doesn't work, I'll be changing the racks as I go. So these are not wired up. Um, only the bottom one is, and then I'm going to go from there. All right, so I got my bowl, I got my median that I'm gonna keep the seeds submerged with, um, and I got one cup of my sunflower seed microgreens. Now, I will say I'm gonna try a couple different versions of this. I have sterilized all this uh, with a bleach solution, so it's very important you don't introduce mold, especially with a lot of moisture with aeroponic rows. Um, these seeds can start molding and that can of course become very toxic. I also want to mention when you're using grow mats like this It's very important that you find food safe grow mats You can find a lot of this kind of stuff um, That is not food safe and it'll leach chemicals into your grow and this can be very poisonous for you long term down the road um, so I'm going to put my My one cup I'm just gonna do a couple different versions of this and I'm gonna rinse this out um, first, I'm just going to use water. Uh, I will experiment down the road with different versions of adding um, pH to it when I germinate them. So as far as the time goes, I've seen 12 hours, but for optimal, um, I hear 8 hours is the best. So I'm going to start with 8 hours. Let it soak and that will basically get the seed ready to start growing and then we will go from there. All right, so it's been nine hours actually, just a little bit over eight. I have finished rinsing the seeds out, taking them out of the bowl, and I have spread them out on the grow medium here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn off the light and I'm going to put these in blackout. 
which basically means they're going to be covered uh, so that the seeds will sprout. It simulates if they were buried in the soil. All right, it's the end of day one, and we're already starting to see little tiny cracks, like right there. All right, it is the end of day three, and we are seeing a lot of growth. We're seeing some of these come right out of their shells, actually. A lot of them have cracked. It's taken a lot longer than I expected. I also decided to get some hydrogen um, Got some peroxide here that I'm gonna spray it with to keep the mildew and mold at bay. All right, end of day five, and we are really seeing some good growth here. Nearly every single seed has sprouted. We're starting to see some, some leaves pop out. And uh, most of the radicals are searching and pushing through the mesh to get water from below. All right, it is day eight and Almost all of them have sprouted and they're starting to stand up. All right, this is day 12 and I am taking the seeds out of their blackout mode. All right, today is day 14. I just got back from being gone over the weekend and as you can tell, I've actually had inverse growth. Uh, looks like my duration of watering has been way too long. As the seeds grow, you've got to adjust that quicker and quicker it seems and I've got a lot of wilted and dying seeds. so. I have adjusted it from where it was to every five minutes, which is much shorter. And instead of for two minutes in length, it's going for 30 seconds. So much shorter and more often waterings. And we'll see if that makes a difference. I don't know if I'll be able to save some of those wilted ones. We'll see, but this is part of the learning process. So now I know. All right, today is day 29. These took a whole lot longer than I expected, but with the lack of water they received in the wilting, I'm kind of not surprised. Also, I've discovered that if I take my sprayers from the outside edge, because they're spraying the outside, you can tell, but the middle is, is starving a little bit. I think if I put the sprayers in the middle, um, that will cause these to have a more even growth rate. Also, look at these lights. One of them is more of an LED and the other one's more of a gas grow light. And you can tell, um, this one has a lot better and thicker growth. This one, it seems like they have a little bit lighter green color. The ironic thing is this light lasts longer than this one, but I really like how darker green these are. Yeah, if I take one of these and I pull it out, just look how long that root is. Yeah, so these aren't nearly as thick as they should be. I'm actually a little disappointed here, so I've learned a lot with this uh, growth model. Um, these should be nearly twice, so I, I would say I probably lost 50% of these, um, mainly because of the watering style, and also um, because this should be really thick. You can see, you can see all the seeds that didn't germinate. Now, given some of these seeds are are actually just split open ends. Um, they've actually already sprouted and they're just split open because they fell off like this one here. But a lot of these seeds didn't germinate because they didn't get enough water. I just finished harvesting and check out these root masses. So all this hangs down underneath and it gets misted by the sprayers. It's pretty cool. This one right here. Not too bad. It's a little bit more kind of a wild nutty taste to it. They got a lot of nutrition to them and I think I could have let them grow a little longer. They'd go a little bit more darker green so I think I harvested them just a little bit too early. It's a lot different than lettuce. It's got a, it's got a very very unique taste to it and you can tell some of these were stressed when you have a little bit of uh, red in the stock, like this one right here, that means it was stressed out. So some of these went through some stress because they sprouted and the roots had to grow quite a bit. Those roots were like, I mean, some of them were like seven inches long, um, almost a foot. So they grew quite a bit. And I need, to, I need to check my timing to make sure I'm growing them at the right interval for the right length of time. Because some of these, like this one, it's way too white. I think if I uh, let it grow a little longer, it'd get a little bit more darker and have that rich green to it. So I learned a lot with this batch. Um, I'm gonna eat these in salads and whatnot. 
Um, I'm gonna grow another and another. I could probably review my system and how I'm gonna do it. And I'll also review the different changes I'm gonna do to the system going forward. But here we go, it wasn't a bad uh, first test. Um, I count that as success, although next time hopefully I have a pile about twice that size. All right guys, have a good day.